good morning or good evening uh, myself nandeep nachand i am office 65 mvp or microsoft mvp for office uh, 365 and then uh, i am here to talk about few of the updates that we have for uh, sharepoint so in the month of july that there, there have been new features that got added to sharepoint as well as uh, there have been few of the enhancements to the existing features so let's have a look at them one by one so the first thing what uh, what is rolled out is the uh, new employee onboarding hub which is also called as an neo hub so this neo hub uh, helps organizations um, for guiding the new employees from the onset of their first day on the job and this hub provides new employees with the resources supports and the general information that they need to start with their work it also helps connect them to important people communities and the uh, culture awareness uh, within your organization and it, it also helps stakeholders contribute to the uh, success of the new employee onboarding so th this has been taken care from the perspective of uh, employee who is newly joining as well as uh, from the uh, stakeholders which are already part of uh, your organizations so then how to get this uh, new into your tenant so for that we will have to go to the uh, lookbook that is lookbook.microsoft.com and once you are to the lookbook just click uh, view the designs uh, go to uh, solutions and here you will be able to see the new employee onboarding hub so once we create um, the template uh, or create a site on this particular template what it does it basically it creates four sites so first one is um, pre onboarding hub url which will help the uh, pre onboarding activities of the employees so they have configured it with uh, the all of the required list as well as the web parts layout and other things the second thing is uh, it creates is the contoso onboarding this will help uh, uh, the smoothness in the employee onboarding uh, day or on onboarding activities to maybe uh, get him introduced with the organizations and carry out the other activities but the last two what we have is uh, sales onboarding where uh, for example if he is joining the sales team then sales all onboarding will be the landing for him otherwise even we also have uh, engineering onboarding where again uh, he, he will be a part of engineering and uh, from here he will be able to carry out his work so this new template is available as a part of uh, lookbook which will help us uh, onboarding of your employees so this is one of the uh, uh, one of the update that we have secondly we have uh, centralized management for hub visitor permissions so this is um, optional feature for both hubs as well as the associated sites uh, and it allows uh, for a greater viewer access to the content and improved discover discoverability across the sites so once you enable um, this particular thing onto a hub to sync to associated sites hub owner can specify access by uh, individuals security groups or uh, microsoft 365 groups so the new visitor permissions will become activated the next time the uh, viewer accesses the hub okay so you can use this feature on to the hub site as well as the connected site on to the hub the next thing what we have here is uh, sharepoint migration tool or spmt support for uh, migrating content from sharepoint server 2016 so this spmt tool is designed for migrations ranging from the uh, smallest set of files to the larger uh, enterprise scale migrations so migrating from uh, sharepoint 2016 is now generally available so this spmt tools uh, let you migrate the content from uh, sharepoint onedrive and teams uh, from from various locations including sharepoint server 2016 sharepoint server 2013 uh, sharepoint foundation 2013 uh, sharepoint server 2010 even sharepoint foundation 2010 even uh, you, you can use it uh, for a migration including network and uh, local file shares so these are the new capabilities that has been added to sharepoint migration uh, tool next thing that we have uh, is uh, improvements to the quick edit experience so on any of the list or library we, we have the uh, quick edit experience but the new things added here is uh, fixed row height for example if you have a, a variety of content which will uh, change the uh, height of your uh, row in, in that case you can make it fixed or even auto fit and then we have uh, improved row selection so let's have a demo of uh, it 
So let me refresh this. If I go to quick edit now that I'm into the edit mode of this particular list from here, I can either select uh, fixed height so that even though the description which was very much uh, long in this case, but it has shrink down uh, to uh, equal width uh, for, for each of the row so that uh, we can easily work with with our content. So again, if I uh, go for auto fit, then it will be kind of a wider view uh, giving the details of each of the description. But again, if I switch back to fixed right in that case, I will get more more area to work on. At the same time, it uh, gives the control to select multiple uh, items and then from here even we can edit or even we can copy these items. Um, next thing is uh, we have a create new button at the uh, bottom of the quick edit and we have a sticky first column. So what is mean by that is if I scroll down here we have add new item button added so that uh, even though we are into a selection but we can still go ahead and add new item at the same time. For example, if we have used data, even though we scroll uh, through, through that uh, data, our header will be uh, sticky so that uh, we don't have to look out for uh, which uh, column we, we are changing the values. So these are the newer improvements that we have with respect to quick edit. Then we have automatically block guest access to new files uh, until uh, after security scans are complete. So what it mean by that is um, you can enable the data loss prevention that is TLP to automatically block external access to uh, OneDrive and SharePoint files until they have been fully scanned by the service for sensitive information. So it, it includes uh, search freshness as well as indexing. So if the file has no sensitive content based on the DLP policy, uh, then guests can access the, that particular file. And if the uh, policy identifies a file with sensitive content, then guests continue to be prohibited from accessing that particular file. So until the first scan is complete, uh, we are blocking the guest access to those newer files. Next thing we have uh, add to OneDrive. So this feature enables you to um, add shared folder shortcuts directly to your uh, OneDrive. So shared folders, um, th that means uh, it includes the content that uh, others shared with you uh, through their OneDrive for business or content that, that is part of your uh, shared library in Microsoft Teams or SharePoint. So with uh, add to OneDrive, uh, you can not only uh, able to bring all of your shared content into one place, but even you can also work with the shared content with the same power and flexibility as if uh, the files are, are of your own. So this is again one of the uh, functionality that got introduced into uh, uh, the, the Julia updates. Then we have got um, updates from the um, SharePoint framework SPFX development side. So most of you might be aware that uh, we now have got release for SPFX 1.11, which has been kind of a long waiting release after 1.10. So this uh, SPFX version 1.11 supports uh, additional attributes in the solution for enabling uh, SharePoint framework support <coughs> in the store and uh, new messaging extension support for Microsoft Teams. So that means um, you can even uh, uh, get your SPFX solutions pushed to Microsoft Store so that uh, the, the others can download the, download them directly and start using in, in their applications. But then at the same time, what has been removed is uh, knockout framework. So this knockout wave framework option uh, when, when creating the SharePoint framework uh, web parts is been removed and you can still use the knockout, but there is no default scaff scaffolding available for knockout. Second thing is uh, Node.js version 8 support has been removed. So the current recommended version uh, is uh, LTS 10.x. Uh, 10, 10 so you can start using Node version 10 for SPFS development starting with 1.11. And then again, um, they have removed uh, support for System.js in the local workbench. At the same time, Microsoft is also planning to uh, remove uh, support for local workbench within upcoming release of uh, SharePoint framework. So in in, uh, in the future versions of SharePoint framework, the, there, there won't be any support for uh, local workbench. Um, the next thing or cooler thing I wanted to talk about is the SPFX web part as uh, Microsoft Teams messaging extension. 
Uh, so what we can do with this is we can host our uh, SharePoint framework web part as a Microsoft Teams messaging extensions. So for that, we don't need to use any specific host in the supported host property like Teams tab or uh, Teams personal tab inside web parts manifest JSON, uh, but we can just uh, need to extend the Teams manifest in uh, SPFX solution with uh, Compose extensions because, because ultimately it is the one which is being recognized by Microsoft Teams. So SPFX web part when uh, exposed as a messaging extension, it, it uh, responds to the user interactions by uh, posting an adaptive card to the conversations. So this requires uh, the task modules and a bot. So the task modules notifies the bot of the event that the user has triggered and the bot will post data back to the conversation. So maybe I can show you one demo of it. So I have one web part created called as a planner explorer. So what and then I have hosted this particular web part as a messaging extension. So now at the bottom you can see that uh, this is available as a messaging extension, Planet Explorer. So once I click on this, th this will still be a my um, SharePoint framework web part. But as I click onto this particular um, sec section inside this uh, SPFX web part, so what it will do is uh, it, it will send the information to to the uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, Microsoft Teams and, and then uh, the task module will be uh, triggered and then it will notify the bot about the event that uh, user has triggered and then the boss will recognize that and then it will post the data back to the conversation. So let me try it one more time. Maybe that was the stale session I had. So for example, let, let's click Jupiter. We want to get more information about the Jupiter and uh, the bot has uh, identified the identified that ask and it has written back the information about the Jupiter. So after receiving the notification, what will process the retrieve data? That is the planet name what, what we selected and it will uh, post that uh, planet information to the conversation as the uh, as the adaptive card. So this is again one of the new feature that got uh, shipped with uh, SPFS version 1.11 and then again you can um, use uh, your SPFX solutions to be added as uh, inside App Store. But again, uh, on, only our organizations at the moment can do that. But then uh, once your solution is in marketplace, uh, the, the others can uh, use those for free. So it is kind of a uh, marketplace, but it is referred to as App Source. The last thing uh, I wanted to uh, highlight is the workflow. So SharePoint workflow uh, or specifically SharePoint 2010 workflows have been retired. So SharePoint 2010 workflows uh, have been retired since uh, August, 1st of August 2020. So this applies to all of the tenant even including GCC. So it is recommended to migrate your uh, 2010 workflows to Power Automate or uh, other supported solutions. So for example, if you have created a tenant after 1st of August 2020, there won't be um, support for SharePoint 2010 workflows. Uh, but at the same time, even for example, if you are using SharePoint 2013, uh, in the near future, even SharePoint 2013 to follow the same path. And even uh, in the near future, there won't be any uh, support for SharePoint 2013 workflows. So the SharePoint 2013 workflows will also follow the similar retirement path in the future. So again, it is highly recommended that uh, to use the Power Automate or other supported solutions so that um, you, you don't lose any content uh, during that particular transitions. So however, all this uh, migration of workflows is again a kind of a manual process. So from the timeline perspective, starting 1st of August, all of the SharePoint 2010 workflows have been retired or turned off uh, from the newly created tenants. For example, if you have your existing tenant, in that case, um, even SharePoint 2010 workflow services will be removed from those existing tenants by 1st of November 2020. And if you are still using SharePoint 2013 workflows, they are, they are going to again follow the same retirement path in the future as like uh, SharePoint 2010. So if you are working on um, workflows which are hosted on SharePoint uh, platform or SharePoint 2010 or 2013 platform, uh, it, it is the best time now to get those uh, migrated to any of the uh, other uh, uh, other systems. OK. All right, so at least uh, those were the short updates from my side. Thank you.